Hey there, welcome to the video guys. My name is Pushpinder Gill. So in this video, we're going to be discussing about the signs of uh, the trigonometric functions. So let's understand what are the various signs that trigonometric functions hold. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this diagram which we did it, which we did in the previous video. That is, there is a circle. Uh, there is a circle with the radius of one centimeters or let's say one unit. Uh, this is uh, one comma zero, uh, which is A. This is B. This is C, and this is D. Uh, this over here it's zero comma one. This over here is minus one comma zero, and this over here it's uh, zero comma minus one. And we have a point P somewhere with coordinates A and B, wherein this is actually equal to one. And you have this as equal to B, this as equal to A, and this as angle X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, add another extension to it. Uh, that is, uh, I'm going to add this as an angle of negative X. Remember, uh, the angles are negative when they go clockwise. And this, uh, it's going to be uh, the value, let's say Q. This point is going to be Q, which is going to be a comma minus b right in that case this is also 90 degrees this is also b and this is a right so that's just uh, the diagram which we have made now uh, if we see this uh, expression here, if we see the triangle here we know that that the cosine of x is equal to the base over hypotenuse which is equal to a and the sine of x is equal to perpendicular over hypotenuse which is equal to b now, uh, this is something that we derived in the previous video itself. Now, from here, if you see that uh, the value of cosine of x is equal to a and uh, the value of cosine of negative x is equal to, so this is negative x. So, the cosine over here, uh, it's still going to be base, uh, what do you say, base over hypotenuse, which is still going to be, this is 1, this is A, that is still going to be A in this diagram, if you can clearly see, this is A and this is 1. And uh, the value of sine, sine of negative x is going to be equal to, this is nothing but negative B, uh, because it's, it's downwards, this is negative B divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. So that means from here I can actually uh, generalize something that uh, clearly we can see from here that the value of cosine of negative x is equal to the value of cosine of x. So that's a very very important uh, expression here. So you can clearly see that cosine of x and cosine of negative x both are, both are a and the value of sine of negative x is equal to the value of sine of x right so that is again a very very important expression fine so i suppose everyone is understanding here what we're trying to do and uh, and again uh, the value of a as you can clearly see a is the x coordinate it will go from maximum 1 to a minimum value of negative 1. So the value of A, it's going to be maximum possible 1 and it's going to be minimum possible negative 1. And the value of B also, it's going to be maximum possible 1 and minimum possible minus 1. It's going to be maximum possible 1 and minimum possible minus 1. Since, since these are the ranges, this is the range of A and B, the same thing would be the range of cosine and sine x. So from here we know that the value of a, instead of a, we can actually substitute cosine x. Cosine x is going to be less than or equal to 1, or is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And similarly, sine x is going to be less than or equal to 1, or greater than or equal to negative 1. Again, this is a very important expression that you should know, that this is the range of these two functions right here. Right, so I, I suppose you're understanding this point over here, guys. Now, let's just try and understand uh, what are going to be the signs of these functions here. You know, what are going to be the signs of these functions in various orders. So, I'm just going to recreate our diagram here. This was our diagram. This was a circle with this being uh, 1, 0, this being uh, 0, 1, this being uh, 
um, negative 1 comma 0 and this being 0 comma negative 1 right and uh, we had any p coordinate here that is a and b and we know that the cosine of x is equal to uh, a and the sine of x is equal to b you know the similar way we have actually met this here now from here what i actually need to do is i need to find out uh, what is going to be the sine of uh, the 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 functions sine x and cos x in the first quadrant second quadrant uh, third quadrant and the fourth quadrant so I suppose you already know that this over here is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Now, uh, we know that cosine of x, uh, we have the sine of x here and we have the cosine of x here. Right? So I'm just going to draw a table for you here. Now, uh, just I like drawing a lot of lines here. Okay, now cosine of x is equal to a. Now a in the first, okay, let's start from sine of x first. Okay, so sine of x is actually equal to b. Now b in the first quadrant, it's going to be positive, right? Which means a uh, sine of x would be positive. In the second quadrant, b, it's still positive. The y coordinate is positive. That means it's positive. In the third quadrant, as, so I'll just write down, uh, it's plus plus and uh, it's uh, minus plus and uh, it's minus minus and uh, it's plus minus so you can clearly see that b is going to be negative in the third one and negative in the fourth one cosine of x is actually equal to a which is the x coordinate which is plus minus minus plus so that is plus minus and minus plus And as you've already discussed in the previous video, that the value of tangent of x uh, is equal to sine x over cos x. So from here, we can actually find out uh, the value of sine x over cos x. That is plus over plus is going to be plus. Plus over minus is going to be minus. Uh, minus over minus is going to be plus. And minus over plus is going to be minus. So tangent x is going to have plus minus and plus minus. Uh, so once we have these values, uh, we will be able to easily able to find out the uh, the positive and negative nature of cosecant, cotangent, and secant x, which are the reciprocals of sine, uh, cosine, and tangent x. Uh, another important thing is that uh, first quadrant is from zero degrees all the way till this, which is ninety degrees, also known as uh, ninety degrees. It's uh, pi by two, so zero to pi by two. Uh, this is nothing but from pi by 2, second quadrant is all the way from pi by 2, which is uh, this line here, all the way till here, which is pi. Uh, third quadrant is nothing but from pi to uh, pi plus pi by 2, which is uh, nothing but 3 pi by 2, so pi till 3 pi by 2. And uh, this over here is nothing but from 3 pi by 2 all the way till 2 pi. Right. So just in terms of angles, I need to know what is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So uh, this would be the about the signs of these trigonometric functions. Uh, in the future video, in the next video, we're going to be talking about the domain and the range of these trigonometric functions. So I suppose you've understood this one here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll